Joe, how did you, you know, come to speak to, at, at this banquet? And and if you can, then if you answer that question, I know you met Dabo a couple of years ago at Yankee Stadium. Just talk about that relationship. Yeah. Um, Marty Clary, who was a teammate of mine, is, um, gave me a call and told me that Clemson was interested. Um, we played at Northwestern a long time ago uh, yeah. together, and he played basketball and baseball there and was very successful and asked me to do it, and I was thrilled because – I love the college life in a sense, the, the campuses and, and just what the young people do and they bring life and um, I was very excited to see the campus um, because of all the success that they've had here. Joe, um, you, you uh, coached uh, Mike Messina I think, yes. for a year and also, of course, uh, Mo Rivera, uh, caught for him and coached him. And both those guys uh, voted into the Hall of Fame last week, uh, Mo the first ever unanimous selection. Uh, what was it like to, to catch for him and, and also to coach him? You know, people ask me what it was like to catch Mo. Mo was the easiest guy I ever caught because he never missed his spots. In all the years I caught Mo, I mean, it was in four different years, never had to block a ball. Um, there were never any base runners. I mean, it was, he just did his job better than anybody else with a tremendous amount of humility and class. So it was, it was enjoyable. And, you know, Mo came in through those doors, you knew the game was over. And that's a pretty good feeling when you're a player or a coach. And coach, what do you want to tell all the students here, all the um, attendees? The importance of these four years in their life and how the relationships that they're, that they're going to make during these four years is gonna be the support system for them the rest of their lives. Um, the importance of being a student athlete and how the athlete teaches you so many different things and the student you know, it's going to help you financially the rest of your life. But, you know, I think about the struggles that I've had in my life over the years, the people who were there were my college teammates and how enjoyable that four years was for me and don't take for granted what you're going through. Joe, I think you caught for Jimmy Key in 96 with yeah. the Yankees. What do you remember about him? He was a big star. Clever. He was, he was clever, loved catching him, wonderful guy, irritated Wade Boggs better than anyone I've ever met. Um, but he was fun to catch. And, you know, you think about, okay, Jimmy Key, he was, he wiped, right? The change pitches. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'd still be adding and subtracting and he was on his way to home. So that, I always found that to be <laughs> kind of, you know, interesting, but I loved catching him. A fierce competitor as well. Um, wonderful family. And uh, my wife and his wife were friends, so it was great. How did the year take Wade just with his pitching or with his personality? Oh, with all the Wade superstitions and the things that he would do to his locker. And they once went uh, turkey hunting, and uh, Jimmy took Wade, and, and they didn't see any turkeys in, in New York. And they're, they're all over the place up there. And Boggsy was yelling at him and screaming at him that they, it was a waste of a day. And Jimmy Key the next day had a frozen turkey in his locker. So he knew how to get him. If reports were to be believed, you, you turned down the Reds' job, talked to the Rangers, uh, not running Joe Madden out of town, but you came up with the Cubs. If that opportunity ever presented itself? Is that a place you'd like to go? Well, I think all jobs really interest me um, because I, I do want to manage again. And, um, you know, there's there's timing in life that is really important to me and, and um, my family always comes first. But I do want to manage again. My kids want me to manage again. My wife wants me to manage again. So I'm pretty lucky. What makes Chicago and that Cubs franchise so special? Well, I think it's the fans. The, the tradition there. I grew up a Cubs fan as a kid, um, going to games as a little boy. Um, one of the neatest parts about that was I got a chance to meet my childhood heroes when I played with the Cubs. Um, and that was pretty special for me. Ron Saddle and Jose Cruz. Joe, uh, in, in your over 10 years of, of uh, being a manager, uh, I guess how uh, familiar and aware were you of, of the Clemson program and all the, the major league prospects that they had during that time? Oh, I knew it was good. It was good when I played. When, when we used to, um, when I was a player at Northwestern and, and they had quality teams back in the, in the, the 80s when I was in college and, and the success that they've had here, you know. And I said to them, why not you guys this year? Why not? Go win a national title. Go do it. You're, you're a very talented group. You've got a great coach. You've got a great you got a great facility that's going to help you get better every day. Go win. Monty, how do you react to having a guy like this here? Do you, do you try to pick his brain or just enjoy it? <clears throat> well, I, I mean, 
I think that I'd have to keep Joe here for uh, you know for quite <laughs> for quite some time past today uh, to be able to pick his brain the way that I would like to as a baseball man. Uh, obviously, with his experience, all the things that he's been through as a big league manager, as a major league player, uh, all the great relationships that he's developed over the years, and just how much he's learned. I can spend days talking baseball with him, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but the one thing that I'm so grateful for. Um, uh, is being able to get him here to hear his message, not only to get our fan base uh, excited about the upcoming season, but to teach our young men in our program some really valuable life lessons. Just his talk tonight about leadership, about loving each other, about being selfless, being a great teammate, holding each other accountable. Just a lot of the same things that we talk about, but it, it certainly means a lot when it comes from uh, someone of his stature uh, who has done it at a high level, at the highest level as a player, uh, and as a manager, so it was a what an unbelievable night uh, for our players, our, their parents, the fan base. Um, I'm very grateful that we were able to get Joe here uh, to speak tonight. Joe, you've mentioned that you like spending time with your wife and your kids. TV's been good for you, but it gets to be this time of year. Do you hear the, the ball hitting the mitt? Hear the sound of the spikes on the concrete? And want to get back into it? April, not spring training. Um, hmm. I don't miss spring training as a coach. I, I really don't because it seemed like the only thing I did was cut players, right? <laughs> right. And you feel like you're the Grim Reaper, like once a week you're cutting players and you're crushing dreams. And you know, there's kids that come to spring training that know they're not going to be there during the course. Uh, they're not gonna make the team out of spring training. You know, they might be out of A ball and in spring, but they still wanna be there and you just, feel bad. So to me, I always look forward to the season starting. As a player, I love spring training, right? This is the only time you could get your work in and have it bad, so it didn't count, in a sense. But as a manager, I don't like being the Grim Reaper. Joe Clemson was like a lot of major league teams last year in that the starting pitchers didn't go very deep in the games. What were your thoughts on that kind of growing trend in baseball? I think you do whatever it takes to win. So if you got starters that can go deep, you let them go deep. If you got a bullpen that is locked and loaded and your starters don't go deep, you use that to your advantage. And I, you know, I think there's so much emphasis on power now and how successful power has been that a lot of teams are doing that. And, and teams aren't seeing guys you know, for two and three at bats and they're able to get through games. And to me, whatever it takes to win a game you do and whatever your club you have, that's what you do. Did you invite Dabo to Yankee Stadium a couple of years ago? or how He did was that there. He was um, just there. ACC coaches come around all the time. And I tell you what, that was a huge thrill for me. Um, I'm a helmet collector, <laughs> football helmet, because college pass, uh, football is my passion. Um, I absolutely love it and look forward to every Saturday watching games and, and, and what goes on. Um, and he brought a helmet and he signed it to my daughter, Lena, who was at the time in fourth grade. And, um, put VY, OG on, on the, in the pause, and really special. Just a wonderful man. What were your thoughts on the national championship game and also having a Clemson transfer at quarterback for, for your Northwestern guys next year? Well, I'm excited about that for Northwestern. I really am. And, you know, Clemson proved that they were the best. Um, and obviously they're very talented. But I just, to me, I, I loved what – the, the big three linemen did how they came back and and how they understood the importance of and how enjoyable college was and playing together as a team and having a goal and sacrificing certain things and a freshman quarterback came in and they embraced him and, you know that was kind of my word to the freshman hey you never know when your opportunity is going to come you might win the biggest game of the year so you need to be prepared and the upperclassmen had to embrace them and I, I, it's amazing. Um, the rivalry that is developing between Clemson and Alabama is amazing. Would any of us be surprised if those two were there again next year? Absolutely not. Um, but it's great football. And um, I love watching. I look forward to it every year. And this just seems like a great place. Come to school, um, be a fan. I look at the football stadium and it goes straight up, right? Um, and it just looks like a great place. Monty, Joe did an exercise earlier in the banquet to get your staff and the players out of their comfort zone. Did you know that was coming, and how anxious are you to see the results of that? That was pretty cool. I thought it was it, – it, it certainly was different in a, in a very, very good way. 
uh, you know, just again, just getting our team out of their comfort zone because we certainly talk about that with our players. <laughs> but to be able to do it in a banquet, I didn't expect. So I thought it was a really cool exercise. And just as a coaching staff standing up there, just trying to answer those questions, um, it, it, I wouldn't say that it was difficult, uh, but you got pitchers, you got hitters, you got my strength staff in there. So you start looking, okay, well, what does the strength coach think? What's the pitching coach think? You know, what do I think? Uh, so uh, it was a really cool exercise, and actually, uh, you know, Carson Spires is one of our captains this year. He has all the cards, and he walked up to me at the end. He said, Coach, do you want me to give you the cards now? And I thought that was really cool. Uh, and I told him, why don't you hold on to them and look at them for a little while longer, um, and uh, I'll take the cards from you tomorrow. So, uh, but I thought that was a really neat exercise. And uh, as coaches, uh, we're thieves. You know, we like to steal. We like to steal great ideas from other people, uh, and that's certainly one that I will take from the night. I thought that was a really cool uh, activity for everybody to uh, to get involved with. Jim, a lot of teams will have end of the season banquets. What is the benefit of having a preseason banquet like this? Is in terms of cultivating some chemistry on the team and bonding. Well, we always do it as a preseason banquet just from a timing perspective. It's very difficult for us to have it at the end of the season because the draft. Uh, you know, a lot of times we're playing and the draft has already happened. Uh, so it's, it's difficult sometimes with just the moving parts of some of our guys needing to leave to go start their professional career, guys going to the Cape Cod League to start their summer ball, uh, those types of things. It's, it's, it's difficult for baseball programs to do an end of the year banquet. Um, some, some will do it in the fall. Uh, but one of the great things that we have going on here at Clemson is our football program is so good. If we did a baseball banquet in the fall, uh, it wouldn't get the attention that we want it to get like it does tonight. Three weeks before the season is perfect. You saw the crowd that we had tonight. Uh, it was tremendous as it always is as we get closer to baseball season. So that's why we picked that. Uh, you know, pick uh, this time of year to do it. Joe, you've managed and played in some of the cathedrals of baseball. Did you get a chance to tour these facilities here and just your thoughts like, on them? Wow. I told the kids they were spoiled <laughs> with as good as the facilities are. Um, you know, I look at, the, like, when you walk into the, the clubhouse and you see the, their meeting room and, and you see the, the lounge for the players and where they have a chance to eat and in, in the baseball facility, I was joking about it's the greenest grass I've ever seen in the month of January. You know, where I grow up, grass is dormant. Um, and I was extremely impressed. And I think it gives the kids an opportunity to be proud to where they go to work out every day and practice and to be a part of this university. And it gives them a great opportunity to improve their trade. We're going to do one last question and then we'll get these guys out of here. So. What, uh, what is the one thing you hope the kids and the baseball players take away from what you have to say? How important the relationships they're going to develop these next four years are. Because life is going to be um, full of challenges and adversity, and these are the people that are going to help you through that. And don't take for granted the relationships that are built and that you're building right now. And learn to trust each other. Thank you. Guys. Thanks so much, guys.